Good morning to everyone present here today. I open hearing number five of 184 period of sessions of the commission that is called situation of persons of African descent and national census in Colombia, which was requested by Proceso de Comunidades Negras y la Exacción Jurídica, Asociación Nacional de Afrocolombianos Desplazados and Conferencia Nacional de Organizaciones Afrocolombianas. My name is Estuardo Rallon. I am the first vice president of the commission. I am here today with second vice president and rapporteur for Af persons of African descent, Margaret May Macaulay, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, Rapporteur for Colombia, and Commissioner Roberta Clark. Also, the Special Rapporteur for Social, Economic, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, Soledad Garcia Muñoz, and Maria Claudia Pulido. I will start by greeting the representatives of the state and all civil society organizations. I would like to explain how we're going to distribute our time. We will have 20 minutes to uh, listen to the presentation by the civil society. Afterwards, the estate will have 20 minutes and then we will have different comments by the commission for 20 minutes and we will give back the floor to the civil society for 12 minutes, to the estate for 12 minutes as well. And then we will uh, close the session for six minutes. I would like to remind you that we have a timer on screen and I will ask you to please uh, introduce yourself when you take the floor. Without further ado, I will give the floor to the civil society for 20 minutes. Good morning, honorable members of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, um, Colombian State, and the participants of the hearing. I'm Luis Marina Becerra of Afrodes, representative of Comadre. We thank this space in order to denounce the serious situation of invisibility in terms of statistics regarding the persons of African descent as an expression of racism and racial discrimination that makes visible invisible and has negative impacts on the allocation of resources for public policies that have to transform the situation of historic exclusion, situation that in 2019 was denounced before the Committee for the Liberation of Racial Discrimination, sir, and in spite of the uh, commitments um, taken by the government, the situation has not changed. I'm going to introduce the voices of those who are going to guide this hearing. Daniel Gomez of ILES Acción Jurídica, who will explain legal aspects. Adel Gomez of Proceso Comunidades Negras, who will present different political aspects, such as prior free and informed uh, consultation, Glandia Palacio from Asomado Cambaria, who is going to present some statistics in data. And we will close our presentation with Carabali from Coordinación of Senoa, who will highlight some key aspects in order to conclude our presentation. I will give the floor to Daniel Gomez. Thank you, Luis Marina. Good morning, honorable members of the commission, colleagues and government representatives. I am part of Ilex Acción Jurídica. The lack of statistic information, reliable information regarding the population of African descent is a key element to explain the structural discrimination in the country. Even uh, though in the last three decades, there have been progress for the recognition of the ethnical racial diversity in Latin America, the lack of statistics is a huge challenge to fight uh, racial discrimination. In many cases, this has to do with narratives that deny the existence of racism, saying that in Colombia there is no racial discrimination. 
a clear example of the statistic invisibility is the case of the national population and housing census of 2018. In that census, the population counted as uh, of African descent was 30 percent. In if we compare that to 2005, where four million persons were uh, re recognized as persons of African descent, and in 2018, only 2.9 million were recognized as such. That violated the principles of universality, and in particular regarding universality, this was not taken into account as there were omissions in the census as we are going to explain there was a very huge omission in colombia especially in, in certain departments where this population is located in 2018 there were difficulties to train uh, posters the situation is connected to access to internet lack of um internet in many of these regions the posters in some cases did not ask respondents whether uh, regarding uh, ethnicity in many cases they decided the answer by themselves that denies their right of self-identification the question regarding ethnic origin that had to do with african uh, Colombian uh, members of the population uh, deny them the right of self-identification. It is important to say that the question has different categories and recognizes interculturality between the indigenous and population of African descent. The census shows that the um, different organizations that are part of civil society are going to carry out a procedure in order to um, denounce the results of this census. There is a relation with it, the statistics, invisibility, and the guarantee of their human rights, in particular, their right uh, to non-racial discrimination. It is not possible to have a right if you do not exist for the state without reliable information regarding the uh, uh, livelihoods, the situations in which these persons live and the situations of systematic exclusions uh, in which they live. In 2018, the census did not uh, recognize the uh, duties of the uh, Colombian state, such as the Protocol of San Salvador, among other instruments, in order to share uh, the situation of the persons of African descent and prevent discrimination. The Colombian state did not recognize that the commission has requested the state to produce this segregated information for um, vulnerable uh, populations and the need to design a plan to uh, comply with access right to access to information in, in the annual report the commission um, has uh, agreed on the fact that the Colombian state guaranteed that a duty to um, establish uh, channels of participations, but organizations in this event would like to say that we still need to assess the results of census 2018 and the actions uh, carried out by the state as a result. The inform this duty that had been highlighted by the Commission in 2018 to the Colombian state was not fulfilled. It is necessary to say that statistic invisibility and the impact on human rights is not limited to the census alone. The lack of disaggregated data in terms of ethnic and racial uh, information causes statistics invisibility and does not allow us to know ethnical com um, 
composition of, uh, for example, schools, level of ex uh, excarceration suffer by this population, violations suffer before uh, police and public institutions, among others. We would like to call on the, ser the seriousness of this situation of statistic invisibility that affects the Afro-descendant population. It is a structural problem that has an effect on uh, Afro-descendants in Colombia. I will now give the floor to my colleague, uh, Hader. Thank you, Daniel. Good morning to everyone, commissioners. Thank you for letting, giving us this space to share our perspective about such an important um, issue, which is uh, statistical visibility of the persons of African descent. When we talk about informed prior consultations, we are not mentioning just a norm that has to be complied with. We are talking about a right that proposes a mechanism so that communities and the state have a dialogue within the framework of respect and interculturality. In that regard, that interculturality and that dialogue would allow us to find uh, statistics that are reliable we are not making reference to an administrative um, procedure. It is clear that census are part of that administrative procedure and that through that uh, procedure, there is an impact on populations, especially ethnical territories in this country. Those, those data is important because administrative and fiscal decisions are made based on that, creating an effect on different aspects of the lives of families and communities. Thus, the participation of the persons involved is necessary in order to develop a just egalitarian um, society recognizing ethnical and cultural diversity. Prior consultation does not uh, ask about just self-identification, which is a key aspect, but we need to ask about the whole process, the diagnosis, the design, the conceptual framework, the uh, how this is carried out, how data is analyzed, how um, results are being shared, and the different lines of research that may come out from that census. That is going to allow a more uh, active society with more participation from the communities. The National Population Housing Census 2008 included a prior informed consultation process with a national space of consultation but this was not carried out, taking into account the standards that should um, uh, be taken into account and limited the participation of the population. It hindered uh, the participation of the population as a whole. They had to sign confidentiality and the uh, populations were not able to know the process, how it was going to carry it out. And they didn't have access to the results of that consultation. So that was a process that did not respect all principles linked to a prior consultation. The participation of the state within the academic uh, spaces has not been carried out correctly. Census are part of um, statistics in a country. Afro-descendants have been excluded of most census carried out. And this situation was, um, they were tried to change the situation through different uh, agencies of international cooperation and different social agents that were interested in, in adjusting these instruments so that these statistics are coherent with the ethnical diversity acknowledged by the national state. In spite of the progress register, statistical invisibility 
continuous and facts are denied because of the lack of statistical information. A historical uh, perspective shows the lack of statistical data for Afro-Colombian, which is a political decision not to include variables to count Afro-Colombians, excluding them from national, uh, from government narratives and historical statistics. Out of 18 uh, census, population census in Colombia, only four included the uh, possibility of identifying Afro-Colombians. Three of them were um, carried out after the recognition of interculturality that made statistics um, to be adapted to this uh, new situation. These populations were excluded from statistical statistics and census have contributed to the discrimination and exclusion of Afro-Colombian population, being a tool to deny rights. That concern has taken different or uh, civil society organizations, university agencies of international corporations to work together to create different um, instruments, such as a space of dialogue of, of collective um, to collectively develop actions and gather research, learn lessons that we have achieved in order to establish a relation that enables us to read the situation clearly. This dialogue was fluent between these um, Roundtable and Dane, but after we made all those contributions from the civil society, to participate in the 2019 census that did not have a positive effect on our population. As we know, self-recognition uh, is one of the most complex situations. The um, organizations know that this self-identification is related to those effects uh, caused by uh, racial discrimination in our societies and we should carry out a serious work in order for those uh, sensibilization strategies have um, effects. And I will now give the floor to my colleague. I will start speaking about statistics and the causes are not demographic because these populations were greater than the levels of mortality. So the causes are related to logistical problems. They couldn't, they couldn't get to Afro territories due to security or safety. And these led to people that were not interviewed. And this was associated with their demographic. The, um, the census omission is 1.8, but in the region, in Afro regions is approximately 10% that omission, and in the rest is below 7%. Uh, the DANE used the quality of life interview and, uh, in, and determined that certain Colombians, out of which 9%, that represented 9.3% of the total population, were there. And this here shows that there is an invisibility problem. We were 10% and now we are 9.3% in 2018. And in the same year, there are two different data that are not coherent. We also questioned the use of life for a interview because it doesn't consider the ethnic variation and excludes certain ter rural territories. The DANE also takes into account the surname um, or the last name, but it, the, it doesn't acknowledge that in the sl sl slave proceeding, some people have the, uh, the sl last name of their owners. Now I will give the floor to my colleague Glenda. Good morning to everybody. My name is Glenda Palacios. According to the statistical perspective, we found that the DANE did not only have 
mistakes in the in terms of the uh, ethnical variable but also in terms of housing so they assign the category of condition to households which increased the um living situation of uh, Colombian households, especially in the ethnic communities, when it doesn't happen in truth, the statistic invisibility is not an isolated fact. On the opposite, it is a fact which is interrelated and it's systematic for, uh, to all public institutions in Colombia. An example of this, the data of the census, election census, where all the people are registered in Colombia does not match these census. In, ter in the words of Vega, the DANE database are not uh, reliable facing the civil registration in Colombia and the data of the uh, Office of Vital Statistics. Other institutions such as the Health Ministry, even though it is the same entity, whenever they carry out analysis with the ethnical variable, it's not impossible to capture certain trends. The Ministry of Education since 2018, in the same period in which the DANEM carries out the uh, statistical genocide, denies these figures without any explanation of the demographic that such omission is also present in other institutions in the Colombian state and such lack of information and its interrelation with several ethnical variables shows the uh, systematic omission of the public sector of the erasure of this ethnic community, which is cataloged as statistical genocide, which is also related to racism. I will give now the floor to my colleague, Angela Caravalli. Good morning, everybody. Would like to thank you for this forum granted to the civil society to speak about these topics. We would also like to thank the commission and we would like to uh, request your follow-up facing these uh, issues which are really necessary to solve for our people. We need to build statistical tools which are more democratic for the Afro-Colombian peoples. One is that the statistical invisibility has been present all throughout the history in our country, and now it's present in the census of 2018. That has led to a lack of knowledge of the ethnical community, and we need uh, um, we need our the reality of our communities to be visible. Uh, sorry for the interruption. We have already reached the time limit, but you will have then 12 minutes where you will uh, complete the presentation. So we're going to stop here with the presentation of the civil society and I will give the floor for 20 minutes to the state. Thank you. Dear Commissioner and members of the uh, Executive Secretary, petitioners and participants in the meeting, I would like to thank in the name of the Colombian state for the invitation to participate of this hearing, which the state thinks it's a very space for the constructive and respectful dialogue. In this opportunity, the state will like to reaffirm its commitment with the recognition, protection, and uh, the development of the uh, communities of uh, diversity in communities. For that end, in, among other measures, the uh, 2018 and 22 development plan includes the opportunities for ethnic communities, which has as a purpose to advance in the materialization of the rights of these communities through the implementation of certain strategies. Facing this topic, it is important to mention that the Colombian state has accepted the uh, uh, statistic fault in terms of volume, and it has adopted measures in order to increase the visibility of this population. 
taking this into consideration, I would like to give the floor to the director, Juan Daniel Barranco from DANE, who will expose the measures adopted by the state in the census in 2018. Thank you. Good afternoon, Director and Commissioner Rallon and the rest of the members of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. I would like to greet you from the headquarters of the United Nations here in Geneva, where we will expose both me and Aldo Valencia Ramirez in order to express some of the elements that explain the criteria of the DANE uh, and the strategy uh, of for the visibility of this population. I would like to know whether you can see my screen at, uh, right now. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. In that sense, uh, in terms of uh, statistical visibility of Black, Afro-Colombian, Raisal, and Palenquera population, I would insist, as the director of human rights was mentioning, which are the facts that show this hearing. From this perspective, the national census of 2018 was planned and executed um, following a prior consultation of the ethnic groups. In spite of that, and as we know, in the exam that was uh, made in 2019 of uh, the Committee for Elimination of Racial Discrimination, we really did observe that we had an omission uh, that affected the completeness of uh, the results in terms of the Black Afro-Colombian population, but not of the consistency of the demographical structures, which could be tested, which could be proved through uh, several statistic operations through since 2003, which look to um, uh, underline cultural diversity in the country. In 2019, the DANE established the uh, official character of the Census Declaration for 2018 for this population only in terms of the demographic structures and it declared official the interference in in terms of volume of the Black Afro-Colombian rights and Palenquera communities at 4,671,160 people. However, as the members of the civil organization said, we would also like to read them because for the presentations exposed in order to recover one of the attributes of uh, the census operations, which is a granularity, those results in terms of volumes establish that as from the quality of life interview through several steps that we are going to explain as follows, and is a commitment to avoid any form of uh, racial discrimination, we achieved to officialize the uh, granularity for uh, the results at the subnational level. And this information was given to all the agencies, the planning national department, the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of uh, education and the rest of the ministries that develop policies in favor of the Black Afro-Colombian Brazil and uh, Palenquera population. Based on those methods, we would like to insist that DANEAS, apart from the census operation, has a differential approach in order to make the statistic visibility of the of the social economic economic conditions of the ethnical communities which is cross cutting to its social and economic statistic operations such as the director will explain as follows uh, based on its commitment 
of the executive committee that presides the statistics office, the DEN has committed to comply with certain values such as relevance, collaboration, and inclusion. And based on that commitment, the DANE has the saint and has put at the service of the historically discriminated populations and ethnical in integral agenda with multiple actions that promote the statistic visibilization of the ethnic groups as we are going to see as follows in the rest of the presentation. Such agenda has certain um, yeah, services that would like to incorporate the contributions of these communities in Colombia. And part of this com the commitment, it's important to underline that since 23 and in the 2010 and 2021 period, there is a representation of uh, the total of the national state and the and the president and the rest of the commissioners and the civil societies that are present in this space all the statistics that have to do with the economic social and environmental aspects include the ethnic recognition and this is also important, but which is a differential approach, which was included in the national census of 2018. First, the uh, methodological route for prior consultation for this census was negotiated and was developed together with the institutionality, established institutionality established in the Colombian constitution from the legal perspective of uh, two um, prior consultation to these communities in the period that goes since 2016 to 2021, which included three meetings, um, nine meetings with the seventh commission, 32 spaces, department and capital spaces, where we had 1,200 leaders of the different communities that could be present in order for the re, uh, performance of these census before 2018. So we had not only the um, uh, census operation, but also which are the uh, the strengthening aspects in order to warranty that there was socialization and engagement in the social and public value that implies the ethnic recognition in such census operations, such agreements, which were uh, turned into a protocol which include uh, the training of the operation staff implied in the production phase the uh, communication strategies and the follow-up meeting in order to develop activities within the communication strategies. And this was the uh, space attributed by the law. And the agreements that were established include four um, categories of uh, answers where we speak about the predictions of the households. We are speaking about the ethnic territoriality and the language that belongs to these communities where we can see all the institutional elements that were derived, such as uh, four conventions and some resources that allow us to have a differential communication strategy, strategy develop within this framework. As you can see, some of the elements that we would like to highlight is that the population census in 2018 was a census for the whole population that um, lives in the national territory, which includes a differential approach through that question that in this case belongs to question 37, 
And we add the questions associated to territory, language, and um, ethnic conditions, which is uh, which can be differentiated in the census. So, therefore, the success of the statistic visibility is cross-cutting for the whole population, and it depends on the performance of the questions where we have a series of elements which have to do with its effectiveness, and we will share that in the future. The results of the census imply a challenge between the completeness and the consistency of data. There are questions that are related to self-recognition uh, in connection to being recognized as Black, Afro-Colombian, Raizal, or Palenquero. We see a reduction in the number of uh, responses uh, and even in a capital city such as Cali, which has a uh, ethnic composition that is very varied, we can see the volume of responses to question um, 37 in connection to self-recognition. And in facing this lack of responses, we were able to establish these pyramids with the uh, set of answers that we are able to get through the census. And we were able to determine social, cultural implications um, through other um, service. These are elements that can be seen not only through those statistics, instruments, and, but also we can see the segregated data in terms of rural and um, areas. And we can see that most black persons are in urban uh, areas. And we also uh, were able to determine um, different age groups. Taking into account the volume of responses in terms of self-recognition, ethnical self-recognition, we were able to estimate this population based on the survey on quality of life. And openly in these processes, we establish these um, causes there is a lack of consensus, for example, within the uh, Black, Afro-Colombian, Raizal, and uh, Palanquera uh, population. Self-recognition is a subjective element that has to do with historical, social process, political aspects, and the um, uh, location of these communities in rural or urban areas. In 2021, the percentage of persons over 18 that felt uh, discriminated for any reason, maybe uh, ethnical language uh, discrimination, it was only 1% of the population. This is not the main reason of discrimination. As you can see that age and socioeconomic situation are the most important um, causes. There is an ethnical prevalence in preschool, primary and secondary school, and also till the end of high school, in general terms, the volume of ethnical populations within schools um, have a prevalence of eight and nine percent also prevalence of indigenous populations and these are the most important ethnical groups that were taken into account the comprehensive solution that we have established as we explained before in the commission for the elimination of all forms of uh, racial discrimination 
had to do with the segregated data in order to understand the volume of respondents through different methodologies that involve a methodology metric a process such as the specific recognition not only at the municipal level but of urban or rural sections and that allowed us to quickly through uh, those four procedures you can see blue colors in the most important areas um, were Africa, Colombian, Black, um, Palenque and Racial um, populations are located. And communities were able to know about these results as they were um, shared in the different platforms that Dani has and we also shared these uh, results with the uh, national space of um, black Afro-descendant uh, populations. I will now give the floor to the director in order to explain the portfolio of the statistics and services that we are offering to express our commitment uh, based on values and criteria of cooperation and inclusion. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to know whether you can listen to me and you can see the screen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I would like to greet the commissioners and the members of the civil society. We are focused on guaranteeing the inclusion, the adoption of the intersectional approach in the production of statistics, in particular to guarantee that coherence, the law of the National Plan of Development 2018-2022 in section 154 established that all 55 established that the national statistics system should strengthen the differentiated approach, intersectional approach. That means that self-identification will be strengthened not only through statistical operations, but through uh, health administrative registry, social security, among others. Regarding the development, we have uh, mentioned some of the specific actions we have carried out, such as publication of a guide for the inclusion of the differentiated intersectional approach and the conceptual document of the ethnical comprehensive agenda. This is a guide for all administrative registry for them to comply with this proposal. We have guaranteed the inclusion of the question of ethnical self-recognition in statistics operations, census and service, as the director has explained. And we have produced different sources of information in order to highlight um, public policies such as uh, poverty indicators, monetary and multidimensional, all labor market indicators, take into account the young Black Afro-Colombian racial and Palenque community, the uh, survey on quality of life and vital statistics. We have guaranteed the um, a statistics disaggregated information for ethnical groups in micro data format. We have updated analysis and uh, expansion of statistic information. We have worked different uh, processes with representative um, spaces when statistics operations are not subject of consultation, such as uh, ordinary uh, service. And we have carried out internal uh, analysis. Uh, theoretical and methodology discussions among different teams within Andane to um, carry out statistics operations guaranteeing high quality. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we have run out of time. You will have 12 minutes, 12 minutes afterwards in order to complete or add any further comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your presentations. I will now give the floor to my colleagues. I will give the floor to a rapporteur for the country of Colombia, uh, Joel Hernandez. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning to everyone present here today. I would like to thank civil society organizations for part, uh, getting in touch with the commission, bringing forward this uh, important topic for the inclusion of the Afro-descendant pro, uh, pro population in Colombia. The presentations made by both parties, the civil society and the representatives of the state show a path to overcome challenges uh, post uh, that were presented in 2018. It is important to highlight the relevance of the census in every country in order to include all persons in an equal level, especially when we talk about historically discriminated populations. The inclusion in an objective, realistic way following scientific methodologies it becomes even more relevant. I would like to thank the state for this technical presentation. If I'm not mistaken, it is focused on um, guaranteeing that in the next census and analysis made of the next census, the persons of African descent, Raisal, Palenquera communities are represented in the census in a reliable way, starting with the basic principle of self identification. I would like to recognize that fact and acknowledging that we are making progress to overcome what has been done in 2018. I will now give the floor to the Rapporteur of Persons of African Descent and second Vice President, Commissioner Margaret May McCauley. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. And good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me uh, clearly. And um, I'm very happy to see all those who I know and those who I'm meeting for the first time and hope we can continue working together towards realization and um, of the challenges which exist. Um, if I may, before I, I, I start with uh, my few comments um, and, and questions, um, would, I, I want to ask both, both Juan and Ricardo, could we please have copies of your, your presentations because my rapporteurship would need to go through it and contact you in the future. Yes. Um, I am, I, as my, my brother commissioner, um, Joel has said, um, we can see that um, there is some intent and some, uh, some attempts to try to solve or the mistakes that were made in 2018. But because of those mistakes, which have been pointed out, the gaps which have been pointed out by civil society, one is not concerned about those who are covered and have been covered by um, the census um, results, um, but those who are not. And I, I noted um, a statement which was made by the opening um, of, by the state that the state has taken steps to increase the visibility of this population. And um, I respectfully must say that it is not to increase only, it's to really cover this population because um, uh, um, um, I think it was one who mentioned the decrease in responses and um, that the most uh, um, Afro-Colombians, Blacks and Polonkeros and, and Rizals were in an urban uh, 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 area and not really in the rural, but how can we be sure of that? We cannot be sure of that. And I don't have clearly, I'm sorry, but I do not have clearly in my, in my mind the level of participation of 
of this population in the formulation of the plans for the census to be taken. Um, and so if, if, if that could be clarified in, in simplest specific terms um, about the Ithaca it is absolutely necessary that they really fully participate in it. And, <clears throat> and as I say, those who are not covered and have not been captured by any previous census and, and are presently invisible, they really don't exist as far as policies go or any rights that any, that any Colombian has cannot be enjoyed by them because if they try to establish their rights, they really are not part of, of, the, of the recognized population of Colombia. And that, of course, causes discriminatory problems um, for them. So clear and accurate, really accurate uh, um, um, census, um, which must be as close to 100% as we humans can get is, is clearly necessary. And it, I get the impression that the state is willing and ready and able to try to rectify the, 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 those plans that broke down so that they can reach uh, the accuracy point, which is necessary. Um, and from our, my rapporteurship's point of view, it is a failure of the state and also really a violation of those who have not been covered because they're entitled um, to this. And if there are any laws which still remain on the books, um, which are a bar or a discriminatory, um, that or those ought to be covered as well and ought to be repealed or amended in order to, to put them on the same basis as the rest of the population. Um, because inaccurate censuses result in violation of rights of those who are excluded and, um, and also those who are wrongly entered in a group which they do not belong to. So I'm sure, and the state has made clear that it knows it's his it's the state's obligation to provide and ensure um, a true accurate um, census of all peoples within its territories. And um, I wanted to ask a question. Um, Yes, could you say, um, um, if you can, the state, this is for the state, if you can specify uh, um, exactly the communication channels um, which you used because you felt they were interculturally appropriate and uh, would be accessible to the peoples you were addressing. Um, and when you were arranging um, the, the spaces for the taking of, of the census and what you, you would use in the future. Um, so, um, I think I will leave it there so that my colleagues can have time to speak. Thank you, Commissioner. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Roberta Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Alon, and I join the other commissioners in thanking uh, civil society organizations for bringing forward this important topic, and also I thank the representatives of the state for the information and the guidance that they have provided. There's, there's no way around it. This is a region, this entire region, from north to south, is scarred by this foundational violation of racism. Uh, it's embedded in our history and effects of that history persist across our hemisphere. Um, and they persist in high level, disproportionate levels of poverty, cultural um, exclusion, um, disproportionate incarceration, for example, 
lack of access, equal access to services, um, decent and quality services. So it is really a huge issue, and which is why counting correctly the population really matters because it's in that counting, as we've, as we've heard over and over, that we get to capture the bodies of the persons who are um, in, our, in our boundaries and so public policies can adequately address these historical exclusions and discriminations. Um, so I, I really do see this question of statistical invisibility as a profound issue with multiplier um, effects, negative effects. I, I understand that um, the state's response to the, 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 the charge of statistical invisibility is that the, the primary approach to the census was self-identification in relation to ethnic identity. And by the way, there's everyone has ethnic identity. There's no such thing as an ethnic community because mm -hmm. all of us are ethnic beings. So that's the first thing just to, language is so important that we don't other others when we are all, you know, first of all, human beings and that we all have ethnic identity. So I understand though that the state is saying self-identification was the, was, was the modus to capture ethnic identity of all the people in Colombia. Um, but I understand from, I, I think I understand from the NGO representatives that it is your sense that census interviewers themselves presumed or projected identities ethnic identities onto those that they were interviewing as one of the reasons why you had um, inadequate capture or inadequate accuracy. So I wanted to hear a little bit more about that. And then if that is the case, is, was that a failure in the training process of the, 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 those who gathered the census? And I recognize uh, that on both sides, there's a recognition that participation uh, is important to this democratic process because of course the census is at the core of the democratic process um, and if so then how can that consultation um, how can uh, all communities be more involved in the training of the census interviewers so that you you can deal with what may be just implicit bias and we all know implicit bias is a, is a huge challenge for public policy so I would like to hear a little bit more about that. And I would also want to apologize in advance because I do have to very, very unfortunately and regretfully leave the call um, in three minutes, but I will uh, go back to the recording so that I can hear your responses. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. And I would like to ask two questions. One has to do with the community, the differentiated community strategy that was mentioned by the state. When you have the floor, or whether you have any comments regarding the effectiveness of this differentiated communication. And another aspect that called my attention was that the state um, presented a methodological path for prior consultation, and the organizations made a comment regarding prior consultation uh, as such. And I would like you to um, provide further information about prior consent. I will now give the floor for the special rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Munoz, and afterwards to Maria Claudia Pulida. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to greet the social civil, social civil organizations and the state in order to underline the challenge and the incorporation of a human rights perspective of intersectionality and gender as well. And I would like to take advantage of this hearing in order to uh, call upon the state to take into consideration the guidelines that were developed in the ESCR rights uh, in terms of Afro-descendant people that contains an analysis of the right to household of Afro-descendant people in the region. And I would also like to encourage both the civil society and the state, the Colombian state to take into consideration the recommendations that have uh, arised of, uh, arose from the uh, protocol of San Salvador and the commission where I belong. And I, be I believe that it offers 
very good guidelines in order to take into to implement this roadmap which uh, requires uh, human rights to be placed at the center of all measures. My question is how can we contribute with the state in that direction? Thank you. Thank you, Maria Claudia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to read all the people part of this session, this virtual session. And I would like to reaffirm what was posed by the um, desk rapporteur. We have a report on social, economic, and cultural rights of Afro defendant. And one of the more most important elements that are established there is invisibility, the invisibility of Afro descendant people and the fact that these statistics that the state survey belong to or are uh, gathered in uh, compliance with certain guidelines and that these statistics can be adequate and inclusive. And in the technical team, we had two concrete questions. On the one hand, what is the impact when we are speaking that the uh, Dane director was explaining that there was a failure in terms of completeness in, in, in the 2018 exercise or performance, which was the impact of this failure in terms of the public policies that can be designed and in terms of the Afro-descendant communities and the communities in Colombia. And the other aspect from the human rights perspective is the fact of the self-identification and how these can have several limitations if we have to say if we take into consideration this stigmatization and uh, discrimination uh historic discrimination uh that commissioner macaulay and clark mentioned so which measures can be taken so as to avoid that stigma and so that people can be self-identified self-acknowledged thank you that would be all for my side thank you now we are going to move on to the following stage of the hearing where you can complete uh, your presentations if there were some matters pending. So I would like to give the floor to the civil society. Next. Good morning. I would like to comment that on the technical aspect, the Dana mentions that there is certain consistency in terms of uh, the demographic structures. But that's not true because we know that we have certain data. There is a fundamental omission of a population that is not being captured, is not being observed, and that population due to its ethnic racial condition its geographical condition has presented certain changes all through one time and if they were included in that total of the population the demographic structure but also the social structures would present a significant change but we also see that that analysis is not transparent because if we observe certain structures, what happens in the young populations, we can see there that is a deep reduction of such population. And that is showing that even though they are using the same information, uh, if there were changes all, all throughout time, there are some changes that we should understand and comprehend. I would also like to mention that in terms of, in relative terms, since the Afro-descendant population is concentrated or is focused in certain geographies, well, we would find also different outcomes. Uh, 
we also have to remind you that the Afro-descendant communities are in a developing, economic developing stage, which is different to the white communities in Colombia. And that implies that the birth uh, rate will be different. That is to say that the consistency that the data says that we should find in those demographic pyramids will not be similar all throughout time. I would also like to mention that even though in relative terms, the Afro-descendant population has been focused on the Colombian Pacific area, there have been certain changes related to the armed conflict and the mobility in terms of work. And therefore, we find greater Afro-descendant population in the Pacific, but there are also in the cities such as Medellin, Cali, and Bogotá. We need to measure those uh, numbers, but the data are not allowing us to measure them. And in Colombia, due to racial discrimination, people that made the interview do not only present specific bias, but also explicit bias. And that was clear in the re report that was presented by the auditors on how the uh, census officials carried out the questions, the ethnic questions during the first month of the census. However, the Dane already was aware of those problems because we are in a racial community, in a racial society, and they did not any, do anything to avoid those bias problems. I would like to give the floor now to Maria Camila. Thank you. I would like to... Uh, touch upon one thing I have already mentioned. We have a, a decrease in terms of participation, which has no explanation whatsoever because the DANE also explains that this is not well, and this includes certain specific areas in our bases. And also the machine learning model the DANE is referring to, this model does not consider does not consider the black population history in Colombia, but especially we did not have access to that, to such model. So the data has not been transparent in terms of showing the whole uh, machine learning model so that we can study it uh, profoundly. I would also like to say that this has also been repeated in other institutions, as we have already said that in our initial presentation, but this affected the follow-up of certain problems that are affecting the Afro-Colombian people, such as COVID. Even though we wanted to see how the, we wanted to analyze the data on COVID, it was really difficult to do this uh, follow-up because it's difficult to access those data in Colombia and the uh, databases of the different institutions show different data in terms of uh, ethnic populations. The single registry of victims has a figure that considers the total of the population, which is different from the Palenquera population, for instance, that the Dane is speaking about. And with that, I will close my intervention. I will give the floor now to Daniel. I would just like to mention some topics. The, st the statistics are always tied to racial discrimination proceedings in the United States, the states in the north and the south of that country, that three-fifths of the population counted for the representation in 2018 in the national census, only two thirds of the Afro-Colombian population was identified as such in the census. These two phenomena are separated by two centuries and 
who it it also says us who counts as citizen for the state and who has a right to be acknowledged by the state the afro-colombian uh, population it seems that doesn't and it's in, it's amazing that we are uh, still discussing this in the 21st century i would also like to say that the census is a statistical instrument which is very important fundamental for the creation of public policies and it is related to administrative databases as well we cannot wait until the census of 2028 to solve the problems that arise in 2018 census we have to take immediate measures in order to repair those failures and the, we have to prevent from this um, aspect to be repeated in the 2028 census, but it, also, it is also important to uh, address this topic immediately because those data are not trustworthy. And if we see the reality in the street, the, we can see that there's a contradiction there. Uh, which is evident, which is rampant, and it, it is also linked to the organizations of the state, the disaggregated statistic information, the fact that the statistics have to be reliable and truth trustworthy, and these today we still have a lot of inconvenience in order to have access to the information that complies with those standards. That is also very serious. And I would like to finish with the self-determination of uh, these um, communities. And the problem we face is that the state doesn't acknowledge our self-acknowledgement and this means to assume a past that is linked to our history and we need to say that we are re-victimizing the victims of discrimination. I would like to emphasize that the self-recognition in Colombia is based on the perspective of the ethnic self-determination, but it is also think of uh, certain racial uh, discrimination. There are people that have to be recognized as right subjects of law and this is very important to show their identity and those data are not represented in the official statistics. And I would also like to mention, I, before giving the floor to Heather, that the state recognized in the presentation made in 2019 of the preliminary results of the census, one of the problems were that many of these census officials did not make the question of self-determination. This is not said by us, it's said by the state. The census officials uh, mark the option non-ethnic uh, group, and this is linked to the census uh, that have been used uh, in Latin America in order to erase the ethnic populations from the statistics and in order to minimize their rights and to undermine them. If we do not have data, how is it? How can we address the gaps in this population in Colombia? Racism uh, is uh, sickness and the statistics are the diagnosis of such disease or sickness. And in order to refer to the prior consultation process, we always see the prior consultation as a mechanism that was going to facilitate the problems to be solved, those problems related to the visibility that was shown in the 2005 census. We did all the actions so as to um, solve those issues and since the census will impact the population that are going to be sensed. 
this has uh, certain principles and the dane we really value the fact that they carried out the first uh, prior consultation exercise which is historical but it's not what it wasn't conducted under the international law and principles we cannot uh, allow the dane to make leaders to sign um, confidentiality clauses. We did not have information on how this was going car being carried out. And this interferes with the standards of the consultation. Thank you. Your 12 minutes have concluded. I will now give the floor to the state for 12 minutes. I will uh, let the director answer all questions. Uh, so I'm going to conclude our presentation. Before that, I'm sharing my screen. You should be seeing it. Could you confirm that, please? Yes, we can see it. Okay, I was saying that this information of unsatisfied basic needs is key for the production of public policies. It is available at the level of the departments for different uh, variables. And we were able to estimate uh, multidimensional poverty uh, estimate using the census information that allows us to create this um, data in order to compare poverty uh, within households of Black, Afro, Raisal, and Palenquero communities with the rest of the population that is not recognized without, without, within those categories. For 2019-2021, the estimate of monetary poverty index to compare these uh, poverty among uh, Afro, um, Raisal, Palenquera, and black population and also we were able to compare multidimensional poverty with the rest of the population and we also have we have published all the information related to market labor indicators we are showing what we use in the case of the uh, the youth and we have also published and work with independent uh, researchers in the publication of a past census research, um, for example, for the recognition of um, the Palenquera Raisal uh, for Colombian and Black population. And we have carried out different actions as we have explained uh, with a um, differentiated approach in order to uh, strengthen uh, statistics gathering in regions where most communities that are recognized as Black, Afro-Colombian, Raisal, and Palenquera live. We have carried out the production of information regarding uh, population victims uh, with an ethnical approach. We have strengthened self-census of community census within Black communities, implemented an ethnical approach in territorial statistics plans in different departments, work on the territorial strengthening of uh, vital statistics and uh, civil registration. Uh, we have also developed a geo uh, instrument for self ethnic ethnical self recognition um, guide with the results of the prior uh, consultation information regarding collective territories for Black communities, uh, also an instrument for Black, Afro-Colombian, Raisal, and Palenquera population, uh, according to each department. And I will now give the floor to the director. Thank you, Mr. Director. And once again, I would like to greet Mr. President, all commissioners, and different members of indigenous uh, organizations. I have to answer some uh, questions and some comments that you have made in particular when we want to know the results of 
the uh, study for the segregated results of the census, we can quickly see how in the chapter of that website that you can see on screen, when we go to homepage of Dane, we are not hiding any information and we can access the exercises of innovation that we have developed based on the official approach of experimental statistics. We can see the development of the different elements that we have established. And here we have estimates of ethnical pertinence based on the results of the national census and taking that information into account all colleagues from the organizations can access the presentation the video in which we uh, share the results the methodological document you can download it and you can download the results and i hope you are able to see the chat um, the information is disaggregated in municipalities departments in the country so what happened in 2005 census what happened with the 2018 census which were the results which were the relative variations and which were the elements that uh, establish what we are uh, saying. So we would like to call the attention of the organizations and our colleagues so that you know this information better and we are not accused here that we are um, offering misleading information about the results uh, in connection with the methodology, methodological progress that we have mentioned. We would like to say what is the uh, status of institutional elements for the development of prior consultation in the country. You can see on screen the legal Colombian framework and you can see the different decrees on screen, the different uh, organizational expressions for Black, Afro-Colombian, Raisal, and Palenquera communities. We, you can see the uh, prior consultation, and the consult, consultation commission for these communities. There were more than 232 delegates, as we have said, within the framework of these meetings, we were able to count 4,000, more than 4,000 leaders uh, from these communities. From So it's important to insist on the fact that in, in an honest way, that there were not uh, confidentiality clauses within those prior consultations. And as the deputy director mentioned, we were very clear about the results of the census, about the multi-layer elements in our presentations. We acknowledged among these multi-layered elements that in the subjective perception of self-recognition in urban areas, persons with self-recognition The information may have included some failures in the operational uh, stage of the um, census. Some officials, some posters did not ask that um, question, and that is part of an external evaluation uh, document about the 2018 census. And it's not possible to say that the technical capacity of DANE cannot be recognized as uh, a warrant of uh, consistency. The uh, democratic structures through the indicators that have been presented by Mr. Di the director, we're able to know 
the disaggregated data in order to analyze monetary poverty for each ethnic group at the level of the departments. And this will allow us to establish um, the monetary poverty in each department uh, according to the self-recognition um, element or the recognition by the census. So the prior consultation process was carried out complying with law. We had all the tools and we will uh, answer the questions made by the commissioners, all channels of communications that we have mentioned in connection with the specific uh, question asked by Margaret, how did we include those persons that were not uh, taken into account? There is a document explaining methodological uh, improvement using four different methodologies uh, as we could see in the presentation. And we know how the operational process of the census made a geo-referentiated uh, identification of predictive elements of um, higher presence of a population that is Black or Afro Colombian, Raisal or uh, Palanquero in rural or urban areas. So we were able to improve that uh, methodology. That is in our website. You can access that information, and we are going to uh, hand out that information to you regarding training and the failures committee in connection with that question, we identified that uh, it is a subjective element and that community is mostly located in the urban areas of the country. These elements, as the director mentioned, uh, developed a differentiated approach, intersectional approach. It is an engine in order to develop the uh, values. All persons working in DANE understand the importance of asking that question. And we should train persons regarding the ethnic and social value um, implied in the question self-recognition or self-identification uh, element when organizations say that we have not included or we have not fulfilled or we did not carry out the consultation complying with law, I believe that we were able to explain we have followed follow institutionality. I'm sorry. We should conclude because we have run out of time. I would like to thank all of you. And I believe that um, there is pending information. So civil society, the state can uh, send that information to the commission. One of the reasons uh, to carry out this hearing is to make this aspect visible and um, ask, as Commissioner Hernandez, country rapporteur, said, uh, we make visible this aspect that can be solved through different uh, processes of dialogue respecting human rights. So I will now adjourn this hearing. Uh, thank your participation. We have taken down notes and we will be at your disposal to receive any further information. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.